a nice, fairly good evening, I guess morning, whatever you want to call it. You know, I'm out here drinking that tea, right? Ginger peach. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you, Liam. You know, you gave me some, some an idea, and I like it, man. You know, so the title of this video, The Greatest Moments of My Life. And in the last video, I kind of learned a few things about video editing, like Filmora or whatever, right? Great editing, free. But I found out when I tried to export it into my files that uh, there was a huge watermark took up like a fifth of the screen, nasty, so I went and downloaded a free uh, free screen recorder and just recorded the final version after I edited the video, which isn't much editing, it's just like piecing together the clips that I made, anyway. Um, yeah, so I'll wait till it gets lighter out, we'll go back to MacArthur Island, we'll make a, make a nice video about the greatest moments of my life. garden in uh, MacArthur Island. Not the butterfly path, which is that way. It's blocked off due to the high waters, which is insane. Looks like my camera's a bit off the angle. Oh. Anyways, so, the greatest moments of my life. Uh, a video suggestion from Liam. Thank you, and thanks for watching my video. And, uh, yeah, so, let's get started. Starting off, kindergarten. Oh, yeah. And, um, so, I remember preschool, and I remember daycare, but kindergarten, I was excited for that one, man. Definitely excited, because I was ready to learn. I wanted to be so smart, and I just wanted to be around other kids, and I did. And I remember uh, catching the bus to school, because I used to watch TV about kids going to school, and they acted goofy on the bus. I was making faces to people through the windows, and just being a goofball and it was good times. And when I got to class, uh, I waited for the teacher to leave the classroom because I want to be cool, right? So I did a, I did, a, I grabbed a chair, <laughs> set it up, and did a front flip off of it. <laughs> but I landed on my back, and that hurt. Everybody thought I was cool though, that's for sure. Didn't tell the teacher that. She probably wouldn't like that. She leaves the classroom, the kid gets hurt jumping off a chair. Yeah. And the next one is, uh, Moving here to Kamloops, Kamloops at Native Housing. Initially, I initially I Nikamin, which is my Indian van, and then we moved to Spence's Bridge, where I started grade one and two. And then I moved into Kamloops here at the place we called Complex at the time, and it was awesome. And I remember going going there my first day, and I saw these kids. They were uh, they were playing in the grass with each other. They looked about my age, so I introduced myself. And they're like, who's this white boy? And I told him, I was like, I was like, uh, do you even know what Kamloops means? And I said, it's where the rivers meet. If you don't know, Kamloops, Kamloops, you know, the white people just call it Kamloops. Everybody calls it Kamloops now, but yeah. And that is uh, where I met my first best friend, Wilbur. He had a best friend before me. His name was Cross, but I stole Wilbur because, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> and... We had a lot of fun in those days, man. Probably the best childhood ever. And, uh, yeah, we played manhunt and soccer and hockey and our, played with our toys, especially Bionicles. I love those things. Lego Bionicles. Sadly, they got discontinued in, like, 2000, who knows. They got rebooted in 2015, didn't be successful. And we played video games, you know, video games my mom didn't like, like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And we loved our classic horror movies, retro horror movies. We all had our favorite slasher. Wilbur's, he loved uh, Michael Myers. My friend Dylan loved, um, what's his name, uh, Jason Voorhees. My other friend Cross, he loved uh, Scream. I was a big fan of, uh, of uh, Freddy Krueger, man, the, dr the ultimate dreamer. 
And yeah, so next one, moving to Ontario with my dad. Um, my dad and my mom have been split up since I was five. You know, my dad hitchhiked across Canada from Ontario and met my mom in a bar in Spence's Bridge. And then uh, that's where I came into the picture and my sister. And, uh, but it didn't work out, you know, some drama that I don't have to go into. But uh, basically, um, he came over for Christmas. It must have been eight years since I saw him last. And I told him I wanted to live with him. So about five months later, me and my mom flew out to Toronto. And um, it was supposed to be my sister too, but she, she didn't want to. She did at first, but then she changed her mind. So she stayed here in BC. Anyways, yeah, so we flew out to oh, Mosquitoes, they're back. And, um, yeah, so I flew out to a Toronto and I said goodbye to my mom and I cried. Oh boy, did I cry. I was 12 years old saying goodbye to your mom for who knows how long while she flies across the country all by herself. It was pretty scary. And I remember my dad brought me to Tim Hortons. It was like two or three in the morning and I was having hot chocolate just drinking it up and a cop came up to me and he's like came up to my dad and he's like why is your kid up shouldn't he be getting ready for school tomorrow but we explained to him you know we just I just got off a plane I just moved there and we uh, we we ended up heading to where our, my new house would be we took the 401 took some other roads and we ended up where I would have been living which is Campbellford and I moved around a lot, so I didn't stay put there, but I definitely stayed around Campbellford. I went to the same school, had the same friends, which leads into the next one, which is, uh, is it? No, this is part of the same one. Anyways, and this is where I started school about a couple days later, and I met my new best friend named Cameron. Such a good guy, great heart, love that guy, still talk to him. But he had a best friend before me too. Uh, and his name was Jordan, and I stole his best friend. I guess that's what I do, right? I'm a best friend thief. And uh, yeah, me and Cameron love fishing, and you know, we, we we both played soccer in the yard, and we always we always hung out, man. The next one, Canada's Wonderland. Oh yeah, probably my best field trip ever. Grade six after moving to Ontario. I got to ride the tallest roller coaster in the world, not in the world, in Canada, at the time, which was called the Behemoth. And I rode some other roller coasters like the Bat, you know, that one's like you go up, you do a couple loops, you go this way, and then you go backwards and you redo the loops. That one was fun. And yeah, and then I went again next year and I built an even taller roller coaster, the next tallest roller coaster in Canada, which is called the, uh, the uh, Leviathan which is a super awesome roller coaster. Anyways, me and my dad and whoever lived with us or friends of family, it was an annual thing, man. We would we would uh we would we would go to Canada's Wonderland once a year at least. And at the end of the day, after all the awesome rides, we'd have a we would have a what they call it uh I don't remember, it's some funnel cake. Yeah. We'd have funnel cake. That was tasty. Now, my next my next uh greatest moment would be starting high school, which is not a greatest moment for most people, and I was wondering if I should put it there, but I had to because high school was awesome. You know, it was unlike uh, public school or elementary. You know, you didn't have to stay in the same classroom with the same teacher and group of students. And when lunchtime came, you can go to the cafeteria, or you could just go, you could just leave the school and explore town and eat out, man. So yeah, that one's definitely on the list. And my next one, definitely a biggie. Learning to play the guitar. Oh yeah. I learned to play the guitar in grade 10. Mr. Noble, my favorite teacher of all time. He is so awesome. And I took a music class beforehand and I learned saxophone and I played jazz and classical, but I didn't like it. It was, it was just boring and uninspiring to me basically. Not disrespecting any jazz players out there or whatever. It wasn't for me, but uh, the next the next year, I found out he's starting a brand new class called Rock Class, where he teaches uh, guitar, bass, and drums to rock music. So I learned the drums and the bass and the guitar. Initially, I was going into the class thinking, I want to be a ga bass guitarist, man, ba boom ba boom ba boom But I discovered the guitar, and it has far more range, and it 
it's just more fun and it's more interesting and it's more cool, man, you know? You don't see people like, oh, you're such a sick bassist. But there is some, like Cliff Burton from Metallica. Rest in peace, buddy. You know, you got some great songs out there. But, you know, then there's some great guitarists because at the time, oh yeah, I was a metalhead. I, I got my jean jacket. I'm sitting on it right now because this uh, bench is super wet. I've had this jean jacket for so long. It didn't fit me at first, but I consider it my lucky jacket. And this is, uh, this is when my, me and my friend Peter bonded. Um, me and him were both metalheads, talented guitarists, and sadly he moved to Oshawa and I haven't actually spoken to him since, so uh, I want to reconnect with him, because it's, it's my fault, but it's also his fault. And yeah, so I guess the last one would be graduating high school. And uh, graduating high school is not easy. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter how intelligent or social you are. And I'm not unintelligent or antisocial. But around uh, second semester, grade 12, during March break, is when I had my mental breakdown. Yeah. Uh, I had a psychotic episode. I, had, I felt the whole universe just weighing down on me, personally. And when I started to tell people, like, what I was going through and explaining like my mentality they they thought I was sick you know they put me in the hospital and pumped me with pills and that's where it led to my depression but uh, that's a different story anyways I was in the mental I was in the psych ward of, of the hospital in Peterborough for about a month and a half and um, and uh, my uh, school advisor said I'd probably have to take another semester in the fall I did not want to do that at all. Luckily for me, luckily for me, um, I ended up back in class. I had a lot of homework to catch up on and a lot of homework to do, but I graduated at the same time as the rest of my classmates. It was probably one of the best achievements ever because there's a lot of people out there that don't graduate high school. You know, that's okay. You know, some of them, they get a head start in life. You know, they leave high school and they go and get a job or a career or a profession. And so respect right but some of them don't and they go downhill or they have they become teen parents or whatever and that's basically it I mean that's not the last of my best moments because there'll always be better moments ahead you know but some honorable mentions definitely would be catching my first muskie um, catching my first garpike um, going to a Metallica concert in Vancouver that one was cool. And, um, what else? Quitting everything, man. Quitting cigarettes, weed, coffee, drinking, my pills, uh, TV, like bad TV, like, you know, stuff you don't need to watch, like mindless programming, you know, and video games, because that's just a big distraction, too. Nothing wrong with it if you, you moderate yourself, just like anything. But I, I couldn't do that, so I, I started becoming productive just recently, you know, because I've been numb for about four years ever since I ended up in the psych ward. And now it's just, it's now it's just like, look at me, you know? I'm out here, man, and it's awesome. You guys are awesome, so thanks for watching. Hopefully this is great for you guys. Peace.